It's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. Hey what's going on guys, welcome back to a new video. Now in this one we're going to be going over imbalances. So there's two different terms when it comes to imbalances. There's efficient pricing and inefficient pricing. And as you probably guessed already, and you've probably watched throughout the course already, you probably understand the imbalances already, right? So pretty much when you see an imbalance, it's just a fair, you know, sort of a, a gap in between, right? And what this means is, is that both buyers and sellers in the market are not getting a fair chance of liquidity. Whereas when you look at balanced pricing or efficient pricing, in, right price is you know pretty equal so the higher the wick and the lower the wick in the bullish market are meeting okay or it even could come a bit higher and the wick could come a bit lower but the more the story is there's no gap between the wicks in the three candle move because this second candle is the one with all the most pressure so whether it's buying pressure or selling pressure and then within the first and third candle the wicks need to be meeting or above or below in order to, for it to be efficient right but if there's a big imbalance in price pretty much what they're saying is when you see this there's liquidity there so price will come back down eventually and tap into the imbalance and just take the liquidity i guess right um to go a bit more in depth if inefficient price um is will usually come when we see uh, three bullish or three bearish candles in a row so like i said you know th three candle move you got to focus on the three candles right um so when bullish inefficiency is formed so price moving upwards and there's an inefficiency in price or so imbalance um, it essentially just means that the market has, you know, nothing but just buyers, right? There's, like I said, both buyers and sellers didn't get a fair chance of liquidity, right? It's only just pure dominant buyers, right? Uh, where sellers haven't had a fair, uh, had a, you know, haven't had a chance to get involved. Uh, and the same is true for when we see bearish inefficiency. So when, you know, price moving to the downside, it's just pretty much the exact same thing. And there's only been sellers in the market where buyers have not been able to, you know, get involved. So when price inefficiency forms, um, most times they're not price action will can you know come back to refill that price um to re you know to rebalance price uh, and then potentially carry on in that desired direction right but what you'll see from the um, pretty much sort of you know if we just look at these two right inefficient and efficient what you see from this one is the wick of the high right and the wick of the um, the wick low with the third candle they just don't meet and if you look at this efficient pricing, the higher the wick on the first candle and the lower the wick of the third candle, they do meet. Okay, they don't have to meet, but they just do meet. Okay, so that there is efficient pricing. Okay, so if we jump on the charts, like I said, this is something that won't take long to have, you know, to pick up at all. All you got to understand is what we use this with order blocks. So when you combine an order block with an imbalance below or above it, that's that's powerful. That's what makes a valid order block, and which you probably would have learned by now, right? So, if we just look at this move here, right? Ignore all of this, right? We don't care about this, okay? But if we just look at this here, so here, 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 and here, right? As you can see, there's imbalance here, imbalance here, imbalance here. So this tells us that there's only sellers in the market, and there wasn't any buyers. However, in order for price, like I said, it's all supply and demand, in order for price to rebalance itself, there needs to be a seller for the buyers, pretty much. Because like I said, you know, when even when you learn the basics, you understand that for every buyer, there needs to be a seller on the market, right? But in this case, when we see imbalances, there is no buying pressure. There's, it's all selling pressure. So price will need to come back to meet the sellers and you know, look for price to sell at. So what it'll do is it'll come back in and tap into the imbalances, whether it's partially or fully like it did in this case. So this was fully taken, this is fully taken, and this was fully taken, right? But this wasn't really taken. However, it might, it will do at a future, you know, price. Um, but if you focus on the big imbalances, like, you know, these big ones here, you know, they're the ones to look at, right? And if we look at the most recent, you know, order block in terms of a breaker structure, this could be a valid supply zone. Right, why is this a valid order block, you may be wondering for a start? Well, because there is not only a break of structure below the lows, but look at this candle and this candle, right? It's left a big imbalance. So there's liquidity resting above here. So if we're looking to sell, we know that it's got to rebalance itself in order for price to continue lower. So this is why structure is everything, because if structure is bearish and we see an imbalance and price pulls down and then pulls back up and we're looking to sell with the overall bearish structure it should continue in that desired direction because institutional order flow right in order for price to continue you know bearish you know well saying that if, if price is moving upwards right and if you understand the institutional order flow so just supply and demand um 
when banks have you know long positions open at every swing point because obviously they control the market so every swing point if they have open positions open there and they're in bearish market why the hell would they want to go above and just continue above they will eventually but why would they want to do that within when we've just switched bearish right in this case we just switch bearish so we only want to be looking for sales order block there and also an imbalance right these are imbalances okay However, when you look at efficient pricing, you usually see it more in ranges. So when price is trending, you see the imbalances. So in this case, there's an imbalance. Price tapped into it, right? Partially it tapped into the 50%. Short-term reaction to the upside, right? It wicked the new high, so the higher the range wicks. And then it came back down, filled the full imbalance, came back down, filmed this slight imbalance there. I mean, you could probably potentially class that as an imbalance, um, but there isn't really a solid imbalance there. Um, as you can see, the structural law got violated and we can switch to a bearish market and which price mitigated this order block here, right? What makes this a valid order block? Again, imbalance in price here, okay? So it's always a three candle move you've got to look at. Um, imbalance there, imbalance there, imbalance here. The balance is everywhere. So this is why price moves up and down because when price moves up, there's imbalances in price along the way. So price has got to move down in order to rebalance it. So that's why market structure makes its highs and lows. And the price will then again continue higher. It's left imbalances here on the down move. Price has filled it now. It's left imbalances here on the up move. Price has filled it now. So that's why price moves up. But the reason why price is making smaller complex pullbacks on the smaller time frames is because it's just filling imbalance and filling imbalance. Because the market is driven just by liquidity. Okay. But efficient pricing is again like this. You know, look at this wick, look at this wick, look at these wicks. There's no imbalances, right? Look at this wick. It's you know, there's no imbalance there. Okay, it's all balanced pricing. This is balanced pricing. So um yeah, that's pretty much what I mean by imbalances. Like I said, I didn't really want to keep this video as long because it's not something that should deserve to be long. If you understand it, you understand it. You know, it's one of them. It's like when there's a gap in price. When there's a gap in price, that's imbalances. Okay? I don't trade imbalances. If you trade imbalances, then that's fine. You know, when we're talking about breakers, you understand the imbalances now. So you can trade breaker blocks based off an imbalance, right? That's a different strategy, but I don't place to trade up, but when you see it, you can actually take advantage of it, right? But now you understand the imbalances, now you understand why price moves up and down and does what it does, is because it's all driven by liquidity. When there's an imbalance in price, right? Because like I said, there needs to be a buyer in order for there to be a seller. Oh, there needs to be a seller in order for there to be a you know, buyer, whatever, right? So when there's an imbalance in price and a certain move, both buyers and sellers are not getting a fair chance of liquidity, but when there is efficient price and there's both buyers and sellers in the market, you know, it's like, why would we buy within this big move here? So if we were looking to buy here, you know, there's pretty much no buyers in this time. There's only just pure selling. Yeah, but going back to topic, you know, just imbalances are just when there's a gap in price and the balance is when there's no gap in price. So for example, you look at this, you know, whole move here, there's no balances and, you know, imbalances in price. There's an imbalance here, but look what happened. Price came back up and wicked into it and then continued lower. So that wouldn't be a valid order block because the price has already been filled. Okay. So we'll talk about what makes a valid order block in separate videos. But in order for there to be a valid order block, there needs to be a wick that hasn't been cut. So when I say it cut, I mean a balance that hasn't been cut. So if, as you can see, this is an order block here, right? There's an imbalance here. So that makes it valid. Breaker structures, right? Okay, and if we just actually let's focus on this as a better picture, actually. So, if we just focus on the most recent breaker structure, all right, most recent order block, there's the order block, there's the imbalance, right? Price hasn't tapped into it, however, if price came down and then tapped into the imbalance and ran, that would when we'd adapt to new market changes, right? Not only would we adapt to new market changes, but that is no longer valid because it's been partially collected, anyways. Okay, at a later date, it might come into it when price switch is bullish. But in in the moment, when you're looking for day trading, you know, when especially day trading, we need to adapt to new market changes because we can't forever hold on to the same, you know, point of interest. So, for example, again, if we have an order block here, we're looking to, you know, sell, but price came already up and tapped into this area. Because when I say you understand ranges in a different section, that you understood, you know, when I say I oh, understand your ranges when price leaves a low, when a new range, right? But if price taps into the imbalance, that's when it would be in, in that would be a point of invalidation because if price taps into the imbalance and runs 
and the crates you know breaks the structure and creates a new range we're now in a new range because price hasn't pulled all the way back to the order block it, it won't always pull back to the order blocks that's why we have to adapt to you know, new market changes but yeah that's imbalances and that's balance and like i said there's always you know videos um and stuff being sent out in you know, discord there's going to be you know webinars held so everything that you may be unsure on along the way in the course you can always touch up on um just by asking me uh, or anyone in the group chat and you know we'll all help you so yeah that's pretty much imbalances and uh, just focus on the three candles because that's what makes an imbalance or an efficient pricing and um you usually see this within trending markets so pretty much is when price creates imbalances like we've spoken about right price is moving up down up down the reason why it's moving up down up down up down is because there's imbalances 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 so when price is seen that selling and selling and selling right there's no buying pressure so price will have to refill price continue down it's like you know filling the glass with a bottle of coke you know it's um in, when you drink it you know it's all gone so you need to refill it if you want more but um yeah i'm gonna end the video here guys again i appreciate your time i'm watching these if you have any questions make sure you message me